Hey guys, it's Damon at California Carnivores again. So if you probably noticed, we started selling seeds in a really big way a few months ago, and that's led to a lot more questions about that topic. So I'm gonna do a series of videos about how to collect and store seeds and even how to sow them and so you can have the most success possible with that. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is probably the first thing you have to do, which is collect seeds. I mean, you could always buy them from us, but if you have some plants that are making seeds, there's no reason not to collect those. And they're delicate and small, and so lots of people don't know exactly how to handle on that. Uh, the pro tip is a white piece of paper, plain white piece of paper like this is going to be your best friend for collecting seeds. So I usually do a little bit of limited origami here. First I'll fold it like that and then usually I fold it one more time like this. And then when we open this back up you'll see this kind of created a little bit of box there. So it just has some edges here to kind of hold it up. You could even fold them up a little bit if you want to, but it's absolutely not necessary. And a lot of times us plant people have a lot to do. So the first one we're gonna talk about is how to collect sundew seeds. If you've grown carnivorous plants at all, you've almost certainly made some sundew seeds. Maybe you've never even noticed it, but we're gonna show you how to, how to check on that. This is just a basic Cape sundew here. Most of us, when we first started growing plants from seeds, it was a Cape Sundew that we started with. Those are my very first seeds that I ever planted. They're really super easy and they make a ton of them. Um, you'll probably see your Cape Sundews popping up in your collection all over the place and here's why. So I'm gonna use this piece of paper as like a drop cloth to collect all these tiny little seeds. And you can tell when they're ready because these little um, fruits will have turned black. Some of these at the top might not quite be ready yet, but that's okay. And once that's happened, they should just fall out. So now I'm just gonna tap them in and you can see all of those seeds coming out. Usually I just keep doing this until they stop coming out. And you can even come back and crush some of these ovaries with your fingers a little bit like that to kind of help get them out. See so yeah, how a few more just came out. I'm not gonna get all of them because they're just Cape Sundew seeds and we make a million of them here. But anyways, there we go, we got a nice, amount of Cape Sundew seeds. I mean, honestly, there's probably a few hundred there. And then I'm just going to take one of these little wax paper bags. You can buy these online or just about anywhere. And then when I've got these creases in here, it also helps you guide the seeds into wherever you're trying to put them. And I do that with tapping. It's very sophisticated. <laughs> I just tap the seeds in just like that. And you can see, take some, get those little stragglers in there. Uh, uh, and there we go. So now you can see they're all in the bottom of the bag like that. And I'm gonna label them. That's the next thing. You have to keep track of what these are. I always think I'm gonna remember, but when I come back, I never do. So I have to do everything in pencil for the most part, because it lasts. And I'm just gonna write D, Capensis. And the next thing I'm gonna write is the date. You don't have to get the day on there, but I'm going to write 10, 20. So I remember that these were collected in October of 20. And then I'm just going to fold them up, put them in the bottom like that. And that's really all the sealing you have to do. If you fold it up a few times like that, they're not going to come out. Not very many of them anyways. And then I'm going to put it into a Ziploc bag like this. And you can keep lots and lots of these little packets in a Ziploc bag together. I'm going to put it inside. The key to storing seeds is to keep them dry. If they get wet, they're gonna probably germinate in there and they're definitely gonna rot and you're gonna lose them. So you wanna be incredibly dry. That's why in a lot of the big uh, seed vaults in the world, they're like actually in salt mines because it's so dry and cold in there. So I'm gonna take this and it's a silica gel packet. You could steal one out of your beef jerky packet if you can't find one somewhere else, but you can order these online too. And I'm just gonna toss that in there and make sure it's good and sealed up. And then all seeds, regardless of whether they're tropical or temperate, all go in the fridge. So I'm going to go ahead when I'm done with this and I'm going to put it in the fridge over there. Um, sundew seeds can last dry and in the fridge for like 25 years, maybe longer. But I've definitely sown 25 year old sundew seeds and have them germinate at almost a full rate. Um, don't put them in the freezer. It's too cold. They don't have to go to Jurassic Park on them, but we just want to put them in the fridge. Okay, so that's sundews. I'm gonna put that guy to the side. The next one I'm gonna talk about are um, Venus flytraps. Now, most of the Venus flytraps have made their seeds already. They make them usually around like June. You do have to pollinate the flowers. The Cape sundews, they'll just make seeds 
no matter what. But the Venus flytraps are going to have to get pollinated with two different plants in order to make seeds. So I pollinated these. You can see all those patent, those little shiny, um, shiny seeds like patent leather, patent black leather. And they're just sitting right on top like a little platform. They look really precarious. So you might be like, oh, I got to get those before they fall out, fall away. But they actually stay right on there. Look, yeah, they stay right on there. So we're going to use another piece of paper. Actually, I have to use the same piece of paper. Give it a shake so I don't want to contaminate with those Cape Sandy seeds. There we go. And then I'm just going to use my thumb to knock these off. And see, you can see those seeds falling down. This is from one of the uh, Colorado hardy plants, actually. So these seedlings should be really extra cold hardy, which is kind of cool. And I'm just going to make sure they all fall off. There we go. I think that's all of them. You can remove any big pieces of debris like this because when you're sowing the seeds later, stuff like that is going to rot on top of the soil and it's going to have like Venus flytrap, you know, molds that attack Venus flytrap tissue because this is Venus flytrap tissue. So you don't want that right next to your seeds. You want it to be as clean as possible. You can see that's pretty clean. And then we're just going to do the same thing with those as I did with the sundews, which is just to slam them into one of these bags again. Real quick. These were pretty big seeds. Oops, I lost one. That's why it's also good to have a, another piece of paper underneath here. Because then if you lose them, you can oh, get them. Never be too careful. Then I'm just going to really quickly label these. Dionea M. Colorado Hardy 1020. And then I'll put those in the bag in a second here. So the next thing we're going to talk about are American pitcher plants. And we get a lot of weird questions about these and they can be a little bit tricky. So you're going to have to pollinate these too. If you live in their na natural range and they're outside, they may get pollinated on their own. Um, but usually you're going to want to pollinate them. Um, you can pollinate them with their own pollen. That's called selfing. In American pitcher plants, you actually can do that. And so I'm showing you this guy. The ovary where the seeds are usually made is right there in the center. That's where you're going to find your seeds if they're there. This is one that I did pollinate right here. And you can see that ovary in the center is a lot bigger. See that? So a lot of people go inside something like this that wasn't pollinated and they see that ovary and it looks like something. So they think, oh, well maybe there's some seeds in there. And so they'll start messing around with it. And first you'll pull this bottom part off probably. And a lot of times these things fall out. Oh, what are those? And people think these are seeds. Those are not seeds. Those are old anthers, actually. So those would have had pollen before, but when they fall off of the flower, they fall into that, that little umbrella and get stuck in there. But those aren't seeds. I'm just going to throw those away. And even though this looks like something, we're going to pop it open. There have five segments. So see there, I just pulled one segment away. There's another one. There's actually nothing in there. Those tiny little brown specks. There's some little ones. See those falling out? Not seeds. They're just too small. So those are what we would probably call dummy seeds. They're just little seeds that never made it. So this one though, this one here I did pollinate and I keep track of them with a yellow tag like that. We'll probably do another video about pollination someday, but I like a yellow tag because I can keep track of it. I can see it really easily in the green and red plants. And again, I've written down the parent on there so I know what I cross this with because I always think I can remember, but I always forget. So people get asked me a lot like, when can we tell that these seeds are ripe? So a seed pod will dehiss. That's a fancy botany word for a seed pod opening because in botany we have a word for everything. So it'll dehiss along these seams of the segments just like an orange. So you can see that split there and you can see the seeds inside. So now we know it's ready. You could probably pop it open if it's still a little green and even if the seeds are still a little green they'll probably still brown up so you, if you had to collect them early because you're gonna go on vacation or something you could collect them a little early but it's good to wait till it gets like that and then i'm just gonna pull this whole umbrella part off just like that and get rid of this junk and then i like to see if i can pull these off one by one like that. And you can see seeds are already falling away. Sometimes I get these perfectly off without even the seeds falling off, but one more. Oh, there we go. So you can see all those seeds are still clinging to the ovary like that. And then again, I'm just gonna use my fingers 
Paper and fingers, that's what I do. Almost everything with. Oh. Alrighty, there's a whole bunch of American pitcher plant seeds. You can see you get like from one pod like that, you probably get, I don't know. It's probably two or 300, I bet you. They add up fast when you start counting. So again, we're gonna fold that up. Pour that in. American pitcher plant seeds, they last like at least probably five to eight years before the germination starts to drop off. Eventually after like a decade, maybe only a very few of them would germinate. I'll, I'll label this one later since we pretty much got that covered. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about today are Nepenthe seeds, because we get a lot of questions about those too. And they can be also a little bit tricky. So I have two examples here. This one was not pollinated. And this is one that I did pollinate. So again, this looks like something. And a lot of people think, ah, oh, I've got some seeds in here. And so they'll break these open and things start falling out. And tap, 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 tap. Nepenthe seeds are really light. You wanna hold your breath if you're gonna get it close to them, breathe away from them, because just one little blow and these will all disappear because they're wind dispersed. They're very, very light. But none of those are seeds. So Nepenthes always make things that look like seeds, but these are what we call, somewhat rudely, dummy seeds. So none of these will grow, and I'll show you the difference in a second, but just to give you an idea of the wind situation. See that? That was just a very touchy little blow, and then I lost all my dummy seeds. But we're gonna put them aside here anyways. So this is uh, a cross I did, is Ventricosa by Pedopangii, which is pretty cool, because Pedopangii there's not a whole lot of pedopangii crosses. You can really see, like probably that one there is not fertilized. That one there is so small and not fertilized. But these ones down here are really big and they, they look like there's probably seeds in there. And you can see again, it's dehissed, so it's split in four ways there. And then I'm just gonna pop it open. Oh, this is perfect actually, because there's some dummy seeds in here and there's some real seeds in here. So even in one pod like that, just because I pollinated it, it doesn't mean that all the seeds will be real seeds. When you buy them from us, we've checked and made sure that they're good seeds. But So that's a real seed right there. See how it's blonde and it has that swelling in the ovary right there the in the middle? Or not the ovary. Um, what is that? <laughs> that's the little part that germinates and blanking on the name. But anyway, that's the seed there. And these, again, dummy seeds. Those are not seeds. But there are some real seeds in there. I'm not going to collect every single one, but that really answers, I feel like, a question that we get a lot. Here's a few more. Let's see a few more good seeds in there. Okay. And I'll collect the rest of those in a second here, but let's get them in a bag before they blow away. Again, like that, hold my breath, and there they go. It's okay if the dummy seeds go in there too, because we're just gonna sew them all together, and those little dummy seeds are just not gonna do anything, and these other ones will. And again, we'll put it in the bag, and then put it in the fridge. And in the fridge, Nepenthe seeds, you wanna sow them as soon as possible. They don't last a very long time, um, so probably within about a month is good, but we've, we've honestly germinated Nepenthe seeds that are over a year old. So if they're kept in the fridge dry, they might even last a little bit longer than that. Anyways, I hope that answers some of your questions about collecting these uh, seeds, and I hope you're inspired to maybe try some of your own.